welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on an absolutely filthy day here in the UK. The weather is horrible, um, but the good thing about this channel is it can cheer us up. And today the cheering up is going to be done by Analytical Ninja and a puzzle called Killer Pseudomino, um, which apparently has a perfect rating on Logic Masters Germany. Um, the warning I got from the testers about this is to read the rules carefully. So I shall do that and try and assimilate them. Um, and yeah, apparently it's just it's just a wonderful puzzle. Very original. It's some sort of hybrid of Philomeno and Sudoku. And don't worry if you don't know what Philomeno is, and even don't worry if you don't know what Sudoku is. All will be revealed when we go through the instructions together. And today I think I've got an example as well there. So everything should be clear. We shall see in a moment or two. Um, before I kick off, a couple of things to mention. We've been talking about it over the last couple of weeks. We have our Kickstarter running. Please do consider supporting that if you can. This is the only way to get a copy of Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits Volume 2, our upcoming book. And we are truly excited about it. We've just gone through another stretch goal. I think it was for more puzzles overnight. Um, so yeah, I can't remember what the next stretch goal is, but every stretch goal that we meet makes for a better book. And that is a great thing indeed. Um, other than that, we've got the gas app out now. So if you've not checked out those puzzles, do have a look, especially I think if you're either, if you enjoy the puzzles that are on discord every day from Clover, Sam Kaplan and Lyons and Philip Newman, or, if you want to improve your variant Sudoku, I, I think the best way, if you're especially if you're a, if you're a newcomer to the channel, is to check out the gas puzzles. Genuinely approachable Sudoku. That's where the acronym comes from. And they are mighty fine for honing your skills. Um, other than that, the only other thing going on, or the, well, it's not the only other thing going on, the labors of Hercules. You can see it here, the 12 labors, labors, of, labors of Hercules. It's our monthly reward for November. And the following are the names from today who've managed to get through all 12 puzzles. Very well done. Uh, to Oliver Speran, Sperandino, or Sperandio. Um, Brian, is that right? Brian Codra Scott. Now, Brian Scott, I think Mark did your puzzle last night, Brian. Was that the one about bases? Um, it might have been. Anyway, well done for your debut on the channel, if, show, if so. Um, Johan Asplund, um, Frank Noom, Rob Frankham, Klaus Ku, Kim Geiger, Johnny Bolton, Andrew Andre, Danielle and Colin, Mattis Hen, Xavier ooh, Kretschbaum, I think, could be Kretschbaum, um, John Sloss, Nancy... Oh, Ven Caterson, I think. Riddy Danawout. Lauren oh, Ertolt, possibly. Uh, ben Taylor, Matt Jenkins. Apologies, as always, if I have butchered any pronunciations. I really don't mean to. And a couple of birthdays for today. Um, Anita in Melbourne, although originally, I think, from Auckland. Your best friend, Olivia. Olivia wrote to us uh, and I think you've just moved to Melbourne a, a city I've been to many times absolutely lovely place but I would love to go to Auckland and I know Olivia misses you um, so Anita I hope you have a brilliant birthday today and that the two of you can get together soon and then Kevin you've turned 28 over in Malaysia um, now Kevin's tried to get his wife sister um, mother um, other family members, including cousins and all his friends to like Cracking the Cryptic. But so far, he's the only one of all the people he knows who actually enjoys the channel. That seems very sad to me. Um, so Kevin's looking for other Malaysians who are into CTC. So if you are Malaysian and into CTC, maybe drop us a comment. And Kevin would love to know you, I think. Um, and then finally, Nick, you've turned 22 today. Um, and you wrote us a very kind email, Nick. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you manage to have a brilliant, brilliant birthday. But all that said and done, let's get on with Killer Sue Domino. I'm going to say that wrong every time I try and say it by Analytical Ninja. And let's find out what a perfect puzzle looks like on the 7th of November 2022. Um, these are the rules. Actually, let's get the let's get the example puzzle up while I read the rules in case that's going to help us. Um, so we've got to fill the grid with the digits one to nine, such that no digit repeats in any row, column, 
three by three box or colored region. Okay, so I can see immediately that the, the completed grid has got a lot of colors in it. That is something I approve of. And I can also see, actually, if you look at the green, the green region in the northeast, for example, there is no repeated digit in there. The same is true of, yeah, or every color has no repeated digit in it. Okay. And obviously every row, every column, and every two by three box in the example, but presumably three by three box in our real puzzle has no repeated digit. Um, now, this is the phenomena rule. Divide the grid into colored regions so that no two colored regions of the same size, i.e. containing the same number of cells, shares an edge. Um, now, let's go. So that's, that is a statement of the phenomena rule. So if we stare at the grid, if you look at the purple regions, you can see all the purple regions are of size 2 and none of them touch each other orthogonally, i.e. none of them shares an edge. The two yellow regions are of size four, they don't share an edge, and it's slightly harder to see because the green set, the green regions of size five, they do touch each other at points occasionally on the diagonal point, but they never share an edge, so that they've also met the rule. Um, numbers that match a colored region size cannot be placed into the cells in that region e.g. a colored region of size 3 cannot contain any 3s within it. Okay, okay. so that's why the green regions in our example puzzle have no 5s in them, because they are of size 5 and therefore they're not allowed to contain a 5. So the 1 cell regions in this puzzle are not allowed to contain 1s. That's what we're going to have to remember. Um, well, it's one of the things we're going to have to remember. The small clue in the top left corner of a cage indicates Oh, indicates both the total size in cells of any colored regions. Hang on, I've got to scroll down. I've got a lot of instructions today. Um, so let me, it indicates both the total size in cells of any colored regions that overlap the cage, as well as the sum of the digits within that cage, with digits not being able to repeat within a cage. So, right, so we've got normal killer Sudoku, except there's an additional thing that the numbers in cages are telling us. So this example here, look, there's a 14 cage running across here. And I think what that's telling us, and it is, is if you now look at the colored regions that overlap this 14 cage, there's a colored region on the left that is of size five, a colored region on the right that is of size five, and the yellow region is of size four. Five plus five plus four is 14. So there are 14 sort of, that's the total number of philomeno regions that overlap. Or f yeah, total, you, you understand, I think, what I mean. I, th I understand what I mean. Is that the important thing or not? Probably not. But I, th I think that's clear. Let's try another one. Let's try this other 14 clue. So you can see that takes in those three cells. So again, that's made up of one five cell region starting in the three here one five cell region starting in the six here and one four cell region starting in the five there so the total number of philomeno region cells connected with the 14 cage is 14 as well as the digits in the cage having to add up to 14 and not repeat a digit so gosh that's a lot and we still aren't through the instructions um Maybe I'll call this video the most, com no, I'm not going to call it the most complicated instructions. No, no one will want to watch the video. Um, the indicated diagonals show both the total size in cells of any colored regions that overlap the cells of that diagonal, as well as the sum of the di digits along the diagonal. Right, so we've got sort of little killer clues here. You can see this five clue is pointing at these two cells, that one and that one. So those have to sum to five, and indeed they do in the finished grid, two plus three. But also, I think we're being told that the, right, they're both in the same region, look, and that region is of size five. So the total number of philomeno cells in regions that touch that diagonal is five. I think that's true. And there is an example here. It says, e.g., a diagonal clue of seven would indicate that the digits in or along it would either come from the same seven cell colored region or multiple colored regions whose total size equals seven. That is exactly what I thought was going on. Wow. Wow. Okay. I think, I don't know how difficult this is. I think it was four stars out of five. 
uh, that the email told me. So that should be, well, I'm, no, it's not going to be approachable, but perhaps not absolutely brutally difficult. You will have to judge it probably from the length of the video, assuming I've managed to solve the puzzle at all. But now I get to play. Um, you can play the puzzle by clicking the link under the video. I can play the puzzle by simply solving it now. Let's get cracking and see how to solve this. So now there are some generosities about this setup, aren't there? Because there are some cages I can instantly pencil mark. I've got two, two 23 cages, which must be six, eight, and nine. A six cage, which must be one, two, and three. An eight cage, which must have a one on it one in it there's only two ways of making eight in three cells either one two five or one three four there's another one here um one three four or one two five again so one in box four is in one of those cells but i think any of those four is a potential possibility oh yes and let's not forget the diagonal clues which is something i often overlook so those three cells, again, all, because all these digits have to be different because they're all in the same box of the Sudoku, there must be a one along that diagonal. And the one can't go in an 11 cage because that would require this cell to be a 10. So this eight cage now is not a one seven. That's two six or three five. Um, Maverick, I can hear you. you. Maverick's just taken off from the local aerodrome as usual. Now, if that's a one, that's an eight. That's not going to be a problem, I don't think. Um, an 11, ooh, no, I don't like the look of an 11 cage. Wow, uh, okay. That's, <laughs> that's run dry fairly quickly. I thought that, I thought we were off to a generous start. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm not seeing anything more I can do with killer Sudoku or or the diagonals. Let me just think quickly about these diagonals again. No, I, I'm not sure. There's quite a lot of eight cages or eight diagonals, but I'm not sure why. Um, so we're going to have to do something, I suspect, with the Philomeno rule. So, what are we told about the Philomeno rule? We can't repeat digits in coloured regions. So any regions we build are going to act like killer Sudoku cages in the sense we can't repeat a digit in them. We're not allowed to put a digit of the same size as the region. So if we had a region that was that, this region could not have a five in it because it would be a size five region. And then there was something else about the killer cages and the diagonals, wasn't there? What was the killer cage bit of that? Oh, yes, that funny rule that said, OK, so, oh, good, right, OK. Well, that's got to be problematic. 23. Oh, OK. So there are... Philomeno regions with a size equal to 23 that overlap with this cage. That's an, in oh, I see, and there's the same is true here. So there's going to be a 23, it's probably going to be an enormous 23 cage that overlaps with all of this. Um, let me just, and then the diagonals work the same way, didn't they? So, okay, that doesn't seem to be the most massive restriction. <laughs> what have I missed here? Uh, oh, hang on, I can't repeat a digit. No, 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 right, there's no 23 region. There's no 23 region, that's probably a good thing. Because, because I'd have to have 23 different digits to put in a 23 region. I'm not allowed to repeat a digit in, in, in in right so the maximum size of a cage or a region let's let's get our nomenclature right the maximum size of a philomeno region in this puzzle is nine and that's because i've got to put different digits in in the cage um although 
No, although I can't put nice. No, it's not nice. It's not no. I'm slowly iterating towards what it actually is. It's not nine. It's it's eight. Because if I had a nine cell cage, um, I don't know where I can have a nine cell cage. Let's put it there. Oh no, that's fine, isn't it? No, it's not fine. It's not fine. Because I can't put a nine in it. And yet it has to be different digits. So it doesn't matter if it's, if it's not in the same, you know, if it's, it's moving into different boxes of the Sudoku. It simply would disobey the rules. Because if this was a Philomeno region in the puzzle, these have to, in theory, be nine different digits, which means they are the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, disposed somehow around the map of purple here. But then one of the digits, which would be a nine, has the same size as the region, and that's not allowed. So actually, look, we're already down to saying the maximum size of a region is eight. Now, if you had an eight cell region, Right, okay, so the, the, the way an 8-cell region would work is it wouldn't have an 8 in it, but it would have a 9 in it, because it needs to be 8 different digits, not including 8. Okay, and if we go down to 7, presumably all the pressure is starting to get relieved now, because now we've got to put 7 different digits in there, not, not including a 7. So yes, we could put 8s and 9s in, and, and the pressure would be off. Okay, all right, but at least we're now starting to understand. Now, now I'm going to turn my attention to these cages because I can instantly see something about them now. And that thing is that none of these dominoed cages with this, this sort of quantum, uh, like 11s, 13s and 12s, the, those two cells cannot be in the same phenomeno region. Because if they were, we'd be saying that the that phenomeno region would have to add up to would have to have eleven cells in it, and we've just said that's impossible because the numbers in the Sudoku don't go up to eleven. So so we can what should we do? Should we draw pen tool? We can draw a sort of line going down there to tell us that this phenomeno region is different from this one, etc. Yeah, it's quite interesting as well. I don't know if this is how we're meant to start, but we can see now that oh I see, no, okay, but these could be in the same region, couldn't they? I was I was going to say, can we now extrapolate this and start to push this along the top because this this cell might be in a, a different region to this one, but there's no reason that that needs to be the case. So if this was a five. And that was a five. That could be in the same region. And then that would be part of a six region. And that would be part of an eight region. OK, so on one side of this this dividing wall. There's going to be that or that, but we don't know on which. Ah, ah, OK, and this might all be totally irrelevant because I've just noticed something mathematical that I should have spotted immediately. I'm so slow. Right. Look at these three cells. They add up to eight. Those two cells add up to eight. So those five cells add up to 16. How do we make five different numbers add up to 16 in Sudoku? There is only one way. One, two, three, four and six. Well, you can't put six on a three cell diagonal adding up to eight because the other two digits will have to be one and that won't work. So the six must live in the eight cage and that's a two six pair, which means these squares have got to be one, three and four. And that's not a one. So now we're off, off to the races. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, now we've got a three here. So this is eight or seven. And. And now what are these digits then? This might be something I don't like doing. It really is pencil marking too heavily. But given these two cells are going to impact on the value of these two cells, it might be worth doing. This has got to be three, four, five or seven. This has got to be eight, six, five or four. Now, hang on. Does this 
does the fact we know these digits now affect the size of the regions? It does in the sense that, well, it would do if we knew exactly what this was. If this was exactly a three, that would be saying that this cell could not be part of a region of size three, but it could be the size any other any other size. Oh dear, dear, dear. Right, okay, that's not done near. Ah, that's not six now. So six is in one of those two cells. So six is in one of these three cells. Six can't go on the eight diagonal. Again, this would have to be double one if this was if there was a six here. It's quite a weird puzzle because the what I'm slowly learning is that the actual Sudoku digits don't really help me very much with the philomeno. So I thought I was going to be away once I knew that this cell was three or four, but actually it doesn't really, it very, very, very slightly restricts the size of the region that this could possibly be part of. But I'm not sure it does more than that. So, right, so this six, what is that saying from a philomeno perspective? That's saying that the regions that overlap with these cages are to have a total size of six. It still feels like this 23 is worrying, doesn't it? Because I've got to put regions that aren't that... Ah, oh, you're right, got it, right, okay. So this has to be all, these have to be in different regions. This is it, right, these have to be in different regions because, remember, I've got to make the total size of the regions that overlap with the 23 cage have 23 cells in them. But I'm not allowed to use um, regions that have even of size 9 so the maximum size of region that I can have overlapping with any one of these cells is 8. So it must be 8, 8, 7. That's the only way of doing it. If you can't use 9... Oh, this is lovely. So that's... Oh, I was going to say it's a 7. It's obviously not a 7. It is a, it's a region of size 7. Oh, this is going to be completely and utterly mad. Right, so bear with me here. What, what I've just deduced is that the regions that overlap these three cells must be three different regions of size 8, 8 and 7 in order to get us up to 23. Given that I'm not allowed to use nine cell regions, and if I, had, if I used, um, you know, t if, if these were part of the same region of size 8 and that was part of a region of size 7, then the total number of regions you know this is eight contributing eight this is contributing seven that's only 15 so i need these eights to be different now how do i achieve that given that two regions two different regions of size eight cannot orthogonally touch well i've got to have a chaperone so the region of size seven has to keep the regions of size eight apart um, let's use oh these are the big questions i'm going to use purple so this one is the size seven region. Oh, this and this <laughs> this is amazing. This is an eight. Because remember that these two regions now, which we've had to keep apart from each other, are of size eight, so they're not allowed to contain an eight. So this is a six nine pair, that's an eight. Very confusingly, it's an eight that is of size seven. So we've got to build this up into being a size seven region. Now, ah, okay, and it must go that way because if it, if it was to go this way, my phone is buzzing. Oh, I'm not sure why, Mark's ringing me. I'll, I hope he'll probably text if it's urgent. Um, if, yeah, because if it went this way, given this is a size seven region, if it overlapped with this cell, this six clue would be wrong because this six clue is saying the total number of philomeno region size that overlaps with it is only six, not seven. So that must go there, which means now that's a size eight region. So that doesn't go there. So that goes along there. Uh, 
Okay, and that could overlap, look, with this. Oh, so that's interesting. If that one, which is of size 8, does take a cell from there, then the whole of that becomes that, that part of that region. Because what we couldn't do is, say, make that one overlap here, or part of this one's region, and then have another region going off up there, because this one is of definitely of size 8, and that one is not going to be of size 0. So the total number of cells in Philomeno regions that overlap with the 8 cage would be higher than 8, and that's not allowed. So if this, if this takes any one of those cells, it takes all three of them. Now, can we do that exact same logic here? It must work the same way. Yes, it does, and it's beautiful, because, again we've got to chaperone our eight regions. So if this was an eight region, because there's a second eight region in one of those two cells, they would orthogonally connect. So that is an eight of size seven. I'm gonna make it purple again to be like its friend. It, in fact, it probably joins up to its friend. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, no, it's a size 7, not 8. Uh, right, no, it doesn't join up to its friend, interestingly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, to, for these two to join up, they would have to be of size 8, which we know they're not. They're only of size 7. So let me just double, triple check that. I think that's right. It can't go through there. That's of size 8. Yeah, so this, these are, um, oh, hang on. Right, I get, look, I get digits here. That six is looking at that cell. So that's now a nine. That's now a six. Okay, but I've got to get into my head. And I'm trying to do it. But this doesn't, these don't really matter for the purposes of my shading. That cell is something new. We have discovered something new. I'm going to make it red. Um, no, I'm not. I don't like that color. I'm going to make it yellow. No, I don't like that color. Blue. I'm going to make it blue. That's that's lovely. Um, because and that the reason that's got to be blue is it can't be green because if it's green, these those regions are are of the same size and they're all therefore part of the same region and that would again cut my twenty three down to only being seven plus eight, which is fifteen. Um, what a weird puzzle. It's weird, isn't it? Now, now, if these are not able to be eight now, eight is in one of these two. So what does that mean? Hmm, don't know. Eight is in one of these two, so that could be five, that could be four. Uh, 25. Mm, okay, sorry, I've got nothing there. Uh, let's instead... What do we look at now? <laughs> um, I feel like it must be something to do with how these regions connect to each other, which I'm assuming they're going to have to. Especially as there's an eight diagonal here, that's really suspicious. Because although, actually, hang on, let me think about that. If, again, if this one takes this cell, then this diagonal cannot have any other regions visit it because this is of size eight. So all those would be of the same region. And then we'd have to connect them up like that. Which, oh, that would break the nine. Oh, hang on. Oh, there's, there's problems here. So, because the nine can't, can't just be of regions that are of size seven or eight. It needs to have, oh, that's right. Of course. Then a domino of nine, because I can't make a region of size nine in this puzzle, these two cells are in different, different regions. Um, now that must matter. Why does that matter? 
So I don't know. Sorry, I, I think that there's. Hmm, come on, Simon. There must be a quick way of doing this. This is so cluttered up in this bottom right-hand corner um, that I think there must be a way of. I mean, this cell, for example, if that comes across here, where does this go? Or maybe a better question is, how does this not overlap with this? So if we were going to try and achieve that, how would we do it? This would have to go up here. That would be its first move. That would push this up here. Now that's really interesting because that would push this up here and therefore that those have to be all part of this green region, which means that has to flow across here. And now this is broken. Yeah. OK, this is really nice. So now this region's got nowhere to go. And you can see it's been it's been blocked in. It's going to have to take this cell. And in taking this cell, it has to take all three of those cells. So that is lovely because that means once we take this cell, we have to take both of those. And now, well, now, now we can't take this cell. Oh, that would be huge if that's true. Yeah, if we took that cell as being part of this region, we would connect this region, which is of size eight, with this region of size eight, but they, you know, they are not connected. They are not of size eight anymore. And that means that in connecting this to this, we're going to be touching a different eight cell region. That's not allowed. So that cell is now not available to yeah, and that cells. So this is a. I've got a one cell region. That is actually a one cell region. And in fact, I'm probably going to be able to get the color done here. That must go in. That must go in. And I've got a one cell region in the corner, which we shall maybe we'll just make that one blue as well. That's probably sensible, actually. If I try and do, I think that's what the example did. It had the same size for each particular colored region. So at the moment, it looks like I'm going for. Regions of size 7 are purple. Regions of size 8 are green. Regions of size 1 are blue. Um, so we can draw in some more lines here. We can therefore extend the green up here. We can extend this green here. So again, these two look like they want to meet up now, don't they? Well, they definitely do meet up, in fact, because either they don't, either this doesn't come into the eight cage above it. Well, if it doesn't, it's got to go there and meet up. Oh, no, it can't do that because this has got to be a size seven. Ah, I'm running out of room here. Yeah, okay. So the way to think about this, I think, is this eight cage. This is effectively a barrier for this seven cage because if this seven cage ever touches this, this has nowhere to go at all because it then can't also visit the eight cage as well or the eight cage should have been a 15 because it's visited by philomeno regions of size seven and size eight so this has to live within the confines of that eight cell region oh and i, I can i actually know now what this is don't i because this this is so this is really lovely it's really lovely. This is an eight cell philomeno cage that overlaps with a nine cell killer cage. Therefore, that must be a one cell philomeno region, which therefore makes it blue. And that, if that's right, means I've only got seven cells left for my purple region, which must be there, which means this gets pushed up one, which makes all of that that. Now I've got six cells of this region done i can wall off this region and we can do that bit of walling there um and mm, okay and then we can stare at this and try and work out what's going on 
Let me think about this for a moment or two. It's quite difficult. It's quite difficult indeed to put 8 in box 9. Because remember, a green cell cage can't have an 8 in it. So there's no 8s there. There's no 8 there. You can't repeat an 8 in purple, so there's no 8 there. Yeah, oh, oh, sorry, and there's a pencil marked 8 up there. So in fact, 8 is in one of those three cells and 8 lives in the corner. No song for you, but I'm very grateful to you, Mr. 8, for existing and showing your face in public exactly there. So, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, okay, that's in the same... Yeah, you can't repeat a digit in a region. That's in the same region as this. So that's got to be a 9. That's got to be a 6. So now 6. 6 is in one of these two. Okay, maybe I, I can't do that. What about, what about 9 then? I've got to put... I've got to put every, yeah, okay, in an eight cell region in this puzzle, I've got to put every digit apart from, apart from eight. So where does the nine go in this region? It's not there, it's not there. And it can't go in a nine cage because then I'd have to accompany that with a zero. So one of those two cells is nine which means one of these two cells is 9. Okay, sorry, that's perhaps not um, not as cool as I was hoping. 8 is in one of these cells. Um, uh, what else? What else can we do? That would be a three. I still got to. I still got to make sure I get the right digits along this diagonal as well to make the eight diagonal work. Oh, I tell you what, I can't do is put nine on an eight diagonal. So that's got to be nine. Oh, that's lovely. Right now, I get a five seven pair at the top out of nowhere which means I've got an 8-9 pair in here, which means this cell is 6 or 8. Whoopsie. Um, did I say 6 or 8? I meant 4 or 5. <laughs> Why did I get that from? Uh, that cell is 5 or 7. Oh, that's, that's weird. That is, oh, right. The way to do this, the way I did, the way I did it, and the way the way to do it are different. <laughs> the way to do it is to sum those four cells using the power of maths. Now, if you do that, you can see those four cells sum to twenty-five, and those sum to seventeen, which means these cells sum to eight. So you can see there's only one way to do that, not using a repeated four. So this is five and this is three. The bad way to do it, which is the way I did it, is to ask yourself simply the question, could that be nine? And then notice that would make this four, notice this would make that eight, and that would make that four. That's the slow way and the inelegant way to do it. So don't do it that way. That's very disappointing. So that's five, that's three, that's eight, that's nine. So that's not three anymore. I've got lots and lots of eights and nines all over the place. Like really, really a great deal of them. Yeah, okay, I can't put eight and nine in the eight cage. So where do eight and nine go in this box? Well, I think they go there. And that means eight and nine go over here. And that's quite cool because that cell is now an 8 or a 9. Because if you put 8 and 9 in the 19 cage, both of those cells have to be a 1. And that won't work. So, where are we going with this logic? <laughs> We're going to... 
Right, okay, there is no seven in my purple cage. So seven in box eight is in one of those cells, which then can't repeat. Oh, oh, this is great. This is great. Okay, that's really lovely again. But now because seven is in here, I can't repeat seven in there. And I can't put seven in purple because this is a size seven region. So seven goes there and that also seems to give me a six by pencil marking. And that gives me a, t oh, this is great. That gives me a two by nine caging. And therefore that diagonal is a one five, well, a one, two, five triple adding up to eight, which means those two squares are a three, four pair. Um, so do we know those digits now given we've, no, not quite. We know they're from three, four and seven. And we know there's definitely a seven in them. So that, ah, so this is a seven, eight pair in box, box seven. Six, this is a six, nine pair, how strange. And therefore this is a four, five pair. And if that's a four, five pair by Sudoku, that's a one, that's a five. And somehow that doesn't do anything to this column. That is really disappointing. Ah, bobbins. Um, okay, if that's four, five, those are not four. Oh, they're not four. So this is a three, seven pair. Now that operates through the medium of greenness to take three out of there. We'd have a repeated three. So that's four, that's three. That's one by Sudoku. This is four by Sudoku. That's three and that's eight. Good grief. Now, for our next trick, we will argue about where three and seven go in this column. We don't know the answer to that, but they're in those two cells. We know those squares are two, four, and five. So, so I must know this square. That's a, that's a one by Sudoku then. So there's a what? Ah, is, is that? Does that mean there's a one in my nineteen cage? It does, because there's a there's not a one in those cells. Oh, in fact, look, I've got a one, two, three triple here. That's beautiful, or is it? Well, it's at least a little bit interesting, because what I can't do, look. I've just worked out there's a one in my 19 cage. Now I can't put two and three in an eight cage or they will only add up to five. And there is a knowledge bomb for you from Cracking the Cryptic, which is that five and eight are not the same numbers. So where do I put the two or the three that doesn't live in the eight cage? Well, I must put it in the 19 cage. So there are two very low numbers in my 19 cage. It's either a one, a two, a seven and a nine or it's a one, a three, uh, and then either a six, nine, or a seven, eight. I don't know how to do that. Um, I'm not even sure I know how to pencil mark it terribly well. This is either two, six, or three, five. Ah, oh, sorry, I can't, I think, I think there's something going on here, but I can't work out how to do it. They add up to 27. By the secret, these add up to 18. Now, that's it. No, it's still not it, because we don't know what that is. If that's 9, that's a 4, 6 pair. If that's 8, well, there's options. It's 5, 6, or 4, 7. No, it can't. It can never be five, six. OK, I am going to explore this a bit more, I think, because there is a secret. Now, it is something I only tell my very favorite people. But if you're still here after 45 minutes, you definitely qualify for that. Now, the secret of Sudoku is that any complete box of a Sudoku, because it contains the digits one to nine once each, sums to 45. Now, that means those cells, which sum to 27, uh, 27, what, well, 45 minus 27 is 18. So these sum up to 18. Now, if this was an 8, these cells would add up to 10. And they would have to be a 4, 6 pair. So that's one possibility. I can't immediately see why that's impossible. But if this was a 9, 
I didn't get this number before, but that would be a 4-5 pair. Okay, right, okay, for some, I think I got the wrong number when I did the maths first time round, because I had was thinking that this was more constrained than it's actually turned out to be. What we've discovered is there's definitely a 4 in this domino, which is the most underwhelming thing in the history of, and we could have got it just by studying the nature of these cages, having worked out that there was a 1 and a 2 or a 3 in the 19 cage, so I've totally wasted everyone's time there. Ah! Um, there's a three here. Okay, so I can do a little bit more Sudoku. I can get a three and a seven. I must know what those digits are, if I, even if I can't do it. Right, that's a two, four pair. So that's a one, five pair. And I, I'm still going with Sudoku. It is outrageous, Analytical Ninja, that you are making me do Sudoku in your Sudoku puzzle. I hope you know how much I, I resent that, frankly. Um, these squares are 2, 4 and 6. Okay, well I can't put, so where does 6 go in this column? I can't put 6 in an 8 cage. We've already looked at that a few times and noted it would have to be accompanied with a double 1. Right, so this is either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. Which means these are going to contain two other digits that add up to seven, along with the seven itself. So there is a seven in one of these cells, and the seven is not here. Because if that was a seven, that would have to be a one, three pair, which it most certainly cannot be. Okay, so seven is in one of those cells. Yes, okay, so now we can ask where seven goes in this box. It can't go in the eight cage because that would make it a one seven pair and it can't go in those cells. So it's forced look to be in my 19 cage along with a one. So we've now got two cells that sum to eight in the 19 cage and two more digits that are either going to be three eight or two nine. And I still don't know what they are. Oh dear. Right, but seven now is in one of those three cells by Sudoku. Now, I still can't put seven in this cage, this cell here, because that would be a one or a three. So seven's moved up here. <laughs> oh, you rotten thing. He's still not, he's still not <laughs> revealing. Oh, I can't put a one in the 11 cage. It's a really, what I think is amazing about this is probably that I'm doing it in the wrong order, but it's very much um, backwards and forwards, isn't it? We couldn't just, keep flowing with our colored regions i've actually had to be do i've been doing sudoku for what feels like several minutes now um right they can't put a one in there so that means there's a definitely a two in there because otherwise three plus four plus five is already 12 and 12 is bigger than 11 that's not a two so there's now a two in one of these cells oh it's so near to ruling out two from here but it can't quite do it um, okay, so what are the other two digits in this cage adding up to? It's got to be 9, so it's not 2, 7. So it's either 3, 6, which is maybe possible, or 4, 5, which would require... 4, 5, it also looks possible. That This would have to be the 5 which would actually be quite useful. That would get me a five and a seven here and here. Um, okay, I don't know. I don't know. I feel I'm exhausting my ability to do Sudoku now. So do we have to go back and think about these cages again? Or the, I don't know the cages, I mean the colored regions again. So what can we say about these? We have got What's the size of this? This is, a, this is the same as this, isn't it? This one is a seven cell cage, so it cannot contain a seven. And this one is an eight cell cage, so it cannot, so it cannot take that cell. Oh, and actually it can't have a, oh, hang on, it can't have a nine in it. Ah! Yeah, this is good. This is, I think I should have done this earlier as well. As usual, I'm doing things totally um, in the wrong order. But 
almost use uh, a, a poor euphemism for that then, which probably wouldn't have been appropriate for the channel. Um, but look, this nine here is preventing this little region, which, well, it's not really a little region, it's little at the moment, but it needs to grow and be a mighty region of size eight, which is the biggest we're gonna find in the puzzle. So this is gonna grow into a giant, but in doing that, it cannot take those cells. Now, I don't think it can take that cell, because if it did, that region of size seven would be very, very, very pressurized. All seven of its cells would have to fit into this cell, and that doesn't seem likely. So this has to well it's going to have to come up here but not have that cell. So I think we're going to get it overlapping with this eight clue. How could it right that maybe that's a better way to, to to ask the question. How could how is it possible for this eight size region not to hit a red cell? One, two, three, four, five. No, it's impossible. It must hit a red cell. And in hitting one red cell, it's going to take all three of them because we cannot then increase the count along this diagonal. So now this, right. So this is also now part of our eight cell region, isn't it? Because this, this cage needs to have Philomeno regions summing to eight, touching it. Now, if, if, if this was not part of green, there are not enough cells up there. So those are both green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more cell to connect them all. That is the cell. So that's it. We've done it. This, this is a complete region. Oh, I thought I would be able to draw around it, but maybe I can't. Yeah, it has let me. Now, it can't have an eight in it, and it doesn't have an eight in it. It's got a three in it. So it can't have another three in it. Now it can't have two sevens in it. So that becomes a five, that becomes a seven. Now, didn't that do something to that cell? What was, the, oh no, that's annoying. I don't think it's, I think, I think I wanted to rule out that from being, a f well, if that was a five, did that rule? Yeah, if that, if that had been a five, this couldn't have been a two, four, five triple because the four would have to go along here with the two and that would have been a five and that would have put two fives in the row. But this being a seven has unfortunately opened the path for that possibility. Ah, ah, that cell now has to be part of a region of size three exactly because this is of size eight so that must be of size three in order to get to 11. Now, the interesting thing about that is that, that this orange region cannot overlap with this region because if it did, this cell would be of size three and that would have to be a size 10 region and, and neither of those things are possible um, in the context of a 13, 13 cage. I don't know what there are. I keep getting my, my words mixed up. So that's got to go there. Um, right, what is this then? Well, this can't be a size one region, so those two cells are in the same region. Um, how big that region is, I'm loath to say. This, right, what, what are the possibilities here? This could be, it's quite tricky. Oh, it's, yeah, it is, it's very tricky because it's got a nine in it, so it can't overlap with that region. And it can't pen in the oh and this the no and it oh this is small this is small because we've got two eights here as well so now this cell and this grey region are not part of the same region and we can't get out via the nine let me think about this so this region to fulfill the 13 criteria it's got to be at least a no it's not a size 4 region because then this would be a size 9 region we know there are no size 9 regions so this is at least size 5 and yet mustn't pen this in and mustn't hit the 9 hang on so it's got to be those is that's the only way you can possibly do it there is no other way of doing that which means this has to come out here 
So that's now a size, ah, this is a size five region, so it doesn't have a five in it there. So that's got to be a two or a four. This is a size seven region, so it's not gonna come straight through there, look, because I think there's a seven in one of these. So it looks like it's got to bend up here, but then not take that cell. Oh, hang on, let's think about that. So it could take this cell, but it couldn't then take this one and it can never take this. So it must turn upwards and it must keep going. So it must go in there. Now, have we broken this? No, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It works because that's the size five region. This is a size seven region and they overlap in a 12 cage, which is exactly what we were, what I'd expect to happen. Oh, that's really, really gorgeous. Now, this region though, has to be a size eight region because that's a size five region. It's a 13 cage. So that gets greenified. That gets greenified. That means that this, which is a size size three region goes there. So that gets all filled in. There's no three. In, well, we already knew there was no three in this region because there's a three here. This is a size eight region. Now our size seven region here how do we do that? I know it doesn't take this cell. Actually, I'm going to delineate those to make sure I remember that. Um, okay. Uh, what does that mean? I think I still got to take this cell, don't I? This is not complete, it needs two more cells. It cannot take those two, it can never take this, so it must take that, which means that this must come out again. And, well, let's, let's do an audit of what we expect to be the options for this seven cage. We know there's never a seven in it, so this cell has got to be a one, two, four, or five. It's not a one, it's not a five. So that's just two or four, I think. It's almost really beautiful with this two, isn't it? I have got a two, four pair in this column now. Oh, that's a one. Look, I've got a two, four pair and a three, five pair. What are the digits you can put in an eight cage? Ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives are the only options. So that's the only place the one can go. Now that means I've got a one in one of these cells, which is totally underwhelming. <laughs> um, now, if, but if that's a two or a four, that is a three or a five. Is there any reason that we can rule anything out of this cell? I don't think we can because it's in an eight, eight region, so that's allowed. We can probably think about the gaps though in this column, because we've got to put six, seven, and nine into this. So that's a six or, a, no, that's just a naked single, I think, in the middle of the grid, I think. I'm gonna double check it, but I think I've got only the options of six, seven, and nine for this cell, so that's got to be seven which means these cells are a six, nine pair, which unfortunately looks very possible. It does mean six is now in one of those three cells in row three. This being a seven, of course, does mean our purple now has to take one more cell up here. That's the only thing it's allowed to do. And we know that cell is also from one, two, four, and five and it's not one, and it's not, so that's a two, four pair, good grief. And therefore that cell, which can't repeat a digit, has become a five out of nowhere. This is a two, four pair. This being a seven means that's, a oh, <laughs> has that been available for ages? Probably, but I've been having a lot of fun sorting all this out. That's, that's done by maths, that's a two. Uh, that's a two, that's a four. So that's a four, that's a two. That's got me my two in my 11 cage look. Those two squares are three and four. Oh, bother. Well, that at least limits this digit though, doesn't it? This has to be a six or a five now. So that's a four, five, six triple. 
So these are from 7, 8, and 9. Neither of them can be 8, so that makes that an 8, which makes this a 7, 9 pair, which makes this a 1, 2 pair by mathematics. That cell is a 4 by Sudoku. That's just brilliant. It's just quite brilliant. That being a 4 means that's a 5 by maths, which makes that a 6. Hopefully there will be an option 3 and 5 is available as an option for my 8 cage. I'd be quite surprised if I can't finish the Sudoku part of this now. I have to say, it feels like I'm doing... It feels like sort of everything is flowing in that regard. Let's see if we can do it. We just ticked over an hour in terms of video length, which is about standard nowadays, it seems. Once This is a 1-7 pair. Oh, okay. Um... Is there some reason I can't put any of these digits in these funny cages? Ah, this is not big enough yet. This is this needs to be a size 8 cage, so it's got to grow. Um, oh, where it's probably going to overlap with this, isn't it? Ah, and I've got... Right, and this cell is a size 7 cage overlapping with an 11 cage. So these two cells are interesting because they are not part of the same four cells cage or four cell colored region. Because if they were, they'd have a four in and that's not allowed. So these are different colors. So this is either a one, a size one region and a size three region, or it's a two regions of size two. I'm afraid I don't know how to do that either. I still haven't finished this region either. What's this one? So this has got to be, this is an eight cell region. So it can't have an eight in it. So it's got to have one of these two digits in it. It could have both of them. It's lacking, yes, okay, it's lacking a three and a seven. They are the digits that are not have not appeared in this eight cell cage. So it is those two, that's the only way I can get those. So that means that is a region. Um, sorry, and now there's a pregnant pause while I try and work out what on earth is going on. What about those cells? They are now definitely a 6-8 pair. This 5 means we now know the nature of this 8 cage. That's got to be uh, a one three four cage. And look, we're going to get some digits in that. This four is not doing the work. Well, this one three pair is though. So that's one, that's seven, that's seven, that's nine, that's nine, that's six, that's six, that's two. Six, that's two. Almost a, a mistyping ricket there. Uh, this cell is a two in the corner. That's a two, that's a one, that's a one, that's a three. Three and five, here we go. Five, four. <laughs> okay, a six, seven, eight, nine deadly pattern it appears. Can I do that? Yes. Can I do that and that? Yes, I can do all of this. So I've just got the 6789 deadly pattern left to resolve, which presumably is going to have to be done by the magic of coloured regions. Which is a little bit surprising. I can't see how else to do it. Um, right. <laughs> right. So how do we approach this problem? Uh, we can approach this problem by thinking about... This... Right, here we go. Here's a point. This is an 8-cell region that has a 5 in it and a 7 in it. Oh, that's great. That's great. So it can't take either of those two cells. It has to take this cell. And the moment it takes this cell, it touches an eight cell cage, which means those have to be part of its region. And now the only digit we've not put in this region that's a legal digit for it is the digit two. So that must be, and that must be its own little one cell region at the top. That looks a bit lonely there, doesn't it? But I don't, I don't see how else to do that. So, so now, right, now let's, let's, let's delineate this stuff and then we can worry about how to do the rest of this. So I've still got an underdeveloped 11 
cage here. So if this was double two, if these were if these were two different regions of size two, then that cell would not be capable of belonging to the 11 cage. So it would be those two and those two. But if this was a one and a three, then I think all bets are off. Um, I've still got an enormous cage here, a 19 cage. How many actual, how many white cells have I got here? Have I got much more than 19? I've got 14. Um, 21, 23. Oh, that's, well, that's it. Okay. Oh, that's really clever. That is really clever. Fair play. Analytical ninja. Already this puzzle is stunning. That's really clever. Right. So I've got 21. If we just add up. The number of white cells in the puzzle. Those cells I think total 23. Now I've got a 19 cage here which must therefore be covered with phenomeno regions that sum up to 19. Now is it possible for the four more cells that I know are connected to these two cells to ever touch or overlap with these 19? I don't think it is because we're only allowed for these two cells to either be part of a three or to be a double two and a three it, it never gets to the 19 cage so it can't be part of it and therefore whatever however these are made up this these two 11s they are they are consuming four of the white cells which means the remaining cells of which there are 19 are completely taken up by the 19 um, cells. So that means now that the 6 down here the 6 down here is certainly not you know it must overlap somehow with the 19. It's not forming its own its own little regions. And somehow the eight here has to also fit in with all this, although I'm a little less clear on that. Because could it, is it possible, for example, that I can see that this domino can never reach the eight by virtue of a two domino, but it could reach it. But if it reached it by way of a three domino, it would hit a three here. And that would be illegal because there would be a three and a three cell cage. So the eight cage here, which could be part of a single eight cage, is, is not ha having any interference with the 11 cage. Or the 11 cages, I should say. Right, so how do we do this then? So this 19 cage is probably the thing that we need to work out how that works. Now. Wow, I don't really know how to do this. I can see that it's not possible to divide this cage into just two different pieces. Because we, are, we, are, we know our maximum region size is 8, and 8 plus 8 is 16. Now, if you divide it into three regions, though, that seems more than possible. Although, interestingly, if you do do that, if you divide that into three regions, they all have to be of different size, which is quite cool. And that's because of the geometry of the two by two there. So I've just drawn in a potential delineation there, but it doesn't have to look like that. I could do it like that if we like. But the point is that for two of those three 
um, regions to have the same size, you can't do it. They're, they're always going to be orthogonally. Every one of these is orthogonally adjacent to the other two in the, within the in the cage. That one touches both. That one touches both. And obviously by symmetry, that one touches both. So, so you can never divide up this 19. If, if you are going to claim it's a three-way division of it, the sizes of the regions that overlap with it are different sizes. Right, okay, so I'm starting to get a handle on this because that means one of the sizes is an eight. And that's because you can't have a nine size region, that's illegal in the puzzle. And if you only had a seven size region, seven, six, and five only add up to 18. So, right, so one of the regions that touches this is an eight size region. Well, assuming it's got I don't think it can probably have four different um, regions touching it. Now, ooh, there are ugh, there are a lot of eights that I've got to avoid in doing this. Uh, this is right. So this is going to be the restriction. Is if you look here, I've got lots and lots of eights. So I think there's an eight region touching the nineteen philomeno, and yet. I can't take any of the eights that are in the puzzle. So what's it going to be? It's going to be eight, an eight region, and then two regions that sum up to, to 11. So they're going to be, you can't have a nine size region. So it's going to be a four, seven region, four region and a seven region, or a five region and a six region. Okay. Five region and a six region. But the eight, okay, but the eight region here. So that, that, for this to work, that must be part of the eight region that comes out of the 19. So those are in the same, and that, that's because these cells cannot overlap with the 11 region, which is the only other thing that cont can contribute regions in the white cells of the puzzle. So these are, and if you think about the, the way we've worked that out, we've got, we know that the regions left are either eight, five, six, or eight, four, seven, and you take two of those numbers and add them together, you're never getting to eight. So this eight, the only way of getting to eight here is with these two cells being in the same region. So I don't really know how to do that. I'm going, well, I suppose it's, oh, but it's a green region. Ah, I'm running out of room here. Oh dear, dear, this is problematic in the extreme. This is broken. It's broken um, because in making those, uh, well, I'm going to use the, the, the correct color for eights, which is green. And you can see I now can't take any of these three cells because if I touch that, that's an eight cell region. That's an eight cell re Well, th this, this top region is an eight cell region. So if I was to make either of these green, we'd have two eight cell regions touching each other. That means these cells have to be part of the 11 region. And you might say, well, that's fine because this cell could be a three. Yeah, it could be. But now this cell has to be a one and that's fine. But then this cell is totally isolated. And we can't ever reach a total of 19 here because there are only 18 free cells. So it's quite complicated. But have I just proved that the puzzle's broken? <laughs> Is that what I've just done? I rather fear I've certainly, I think I've just proved that eight is not a number that, so have I done the maths wrong on this? Eight is not a region that can attach. Oh no, all right, okay, so, so, well, is it a four? Is it, is this being divided in four then? I think that's all I'm left with, and I didn't, my first, 
gut reaction was that must be impossible. Well, you can't have you can't have a one in a one cell region, so that's growing. Um, am I not going to run into the same problem if I say that this region, which is emanating from this cell, is a size eight region? Let me just think about that for a moment. So if this is a size eight region, that's got to be in the same thing. And then we can't take these cells because they're going to touch another eight cell region. So this has got to come that way and there's not enough room left. Right, so that doesn't work. So this is delineated, which doesn't mean this extends, although it probably does, I think. I, th I think this cell is very problematic because I think this cell here has to belong to a region coming from the 19 because if it was to belong to this, we run into this same problem with this cell being isolated. So, ah, but okay, but that's but that cell could be part of that region, couldn't it? So, so we mustn't assume we know what's going on here because we very much don't know. Right, so this, gosh, this is tricky. This is really, it's quite an intricate final step, isn't it? It's not easy, at least for me, to see an, a simple way of proving what's going on here. If this is a size two region, that, no, no. Okay, that doesn't work because then to get to this cell, I'd have to take both of those cells and that would include a six in what must be a size six region. And the reason it must be a size six region is this eight has to have two regions touching it that add up to, to eight. And if that's a two region, that would need to be, this would need to be a six, but would include a six in its region. So this has to grow. Okay, so this grows to there, which is not very surprising. So this is now at least right. Oh, okay. Well, you can see. Well, I was about to say something that might not be true. Is it possible for that to be a one cell region? It doesn't seem very likely, but I'm not sure I can immediately rule it out with, you know, something like that going on. Um. In fact, that, that almost looks possible, doesn't it? But then I'm, I'm surely I can't fill in. No, then I've got 10 cells at the bottom. So that doesn't work. Okay, so, so okay, so this, this cell here has to grow and it has to take this one. So those are part of the same region. So now we know that these two regions have to add up in size to eight overall. So either this sticks at size three and then this one has to be of size five, but it mustn't overlap with the 11. So it would have to take that cell. One, two, three. I need to leave enough room. Ah, hang on, that cell. Yes, because, yes, this is interesting. Remember what I said about the white cells having to be completely consumed by the 11 and the 19? Well, that means that cell is definitely connected to this cell because it cannot just sit on its own as a lone cell. So those are definitely connected. I don't know what the size is. It could be two or it could be three if it takes that one. And then that would make this one a one. Or this is a two as well. And then that's being brought into the equation. Okay. That's really annoying. So I don't think I can do much with that, can I? Do I know one, two, three? If this is two and this is two, that's definitely in this region. If this is three and this is one. Ah, okay. Right, Here's here is another thing I've just noticed is that this region does not grow. Because if it does, it can't take this cell. It can't be. It can't overlap with the eleven. So it, it's reached its quorum. It's quorate at size four. But that means this must be of size four. 
but we know it takes in a 4, and that's not allowed. So that is a region of size 3, which means this is a size 5 region exactly. Whoa! <laughs> um, and I think it's got to grow downwards, because if it doesn't grow downwards, it takes both of these cells, and there's not enough room for the 4 extra cells that we know have to belong to the 11. So that's forced, which means that's forced, that's forced, that's forced. It's going to be fascinating actually to see how this resolves the Sudoku as well. How is that going to happen? That's going to have to force a 6. It's going to have to force a possible 6 into a region of size 6. That's what's going to happen. Right, okay, but we, hmm. okay, so these two regions here at the bottom, because we know the top two regions, these two are of size 8 altogether, these are of size 11 altogether. Which makes me think they've got to be 5 and 6, and then one of them is going to touch this. 5 and 6. Okay, but what they can't be, what we can't now do is have two different regions overlapping with this 6. Because if we were to try and do that, we know these add up to 11, that's bigger than 6. If we touch this one down here, we know this one is of size 5, and these are not of size 1. So that, again, is going to blow the total. So this, this one, when it's touched, is touched by a region of size 6 that comes from here. And therefore, I think it's got to be, I think it's got to be this side, doesn't it? Um, because it, it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, that would then require this one and this one to take other cells, and we'd overlap again. Right, so this one takes this, it, ta it takes those five cells, which... Wow, okay. Um, and... Well, oh, I see. Yeah, okay, so I'm starting to get there. Sorry for being slow about this, but I, th I think I'm starting to understand. So these five cells now, the problem is they overlap with a region of size 6. So we've got to make this the 6, which means I've got to give it another digit. But that means that this region here is of size 5 and cannot have that digit in it, because that would put it to give it the, the wrong count. So that is a 5 region. Um, now, do I have a colour for five? Yes, grey. So that's a grey region. I don't think I've got another six size region, so I might as well use red for this. Oh, but the problem with this is it's not disambiguated my six and nine. Oh, maybe I've made a mistake here. I don't know what I've done wrong there. That logic felt good. Um... Oh, it might be that we can't repeat the 8. If that's right, okay, maybe it's that instead. That could be it. There might be another way of disambiguating this deadly pattern that's going to help me. Let us hope so. So at the moment, I believe we're down to this pattern. Let's get rid of some of my pencil marking. So we're in this position. Do we know what is, yes, we have a colour for size 3 regions, it is orange. And we've just got to figure out this, this is going to be a size 5 region, I know that for sure. And its final digit is either going to be this one or this one. Um, and somehow, some way. <laughs> well, I want it to be this one, because that's going to disambiguate everything. So why can't that one take that cell? That's the question. 
I haven't got a clue off the top of my head why that should be the case. This is a size 5 region. It's not, it's not got a 5 possibility in it. This is a size 6 region. It's not got a 6 possibility in it. This... Or do we now know what this does? <laughs> um, oh no, what a point to get stuck. I, my brain's gone blank though. I've not got anything here. So how does this work? This is a size 5 region. Well, it's not yet, but it will be. Is there something some reason it can't touch one of these cells? Don't think so. This this is at least a two, so it's either taking this one and that's on its own, or we're going into those two cells. If we go into those two cells, this one this one picks up the six. And that's fine. Okay. I'm just going to blame fatigue at this point for not being able to figure this out. Because it must be completely clear now. Unless I've made an error, which is possible. That would certainly explain why I've got a deadly pattern left. And explain why I can't resolve it. Um, although... Oh, good grief, it's Sudoku. Ah, oh, it's Sudoku. It's not the way I thought it was going to resolve at all. Oh, that's really clever. Oh, my goodness. What a finish. What a finish, that is. Right. What if that's a nine? I can't put nine in box seven anymore because I can't repeat it within the region. That is incredibly clever. Good grief. So that has to be seven, and thank goodness... That at least is going to allow me to finish the puzzle in terms of the Sudoku elements. So we get here. Oh, that's it. And that's that now that now tells me what's going on down here. Because I can't repeat the eight. So the only way of picking up a fifth cell there is to get that one. And if I get that one, look, I've I've carved off this one as size two. So that one must also be of size two, which lovely that allows that to be yellow. Wow. Wow. And that, I believe, is the correct solution to the puzzle. That is, that is absolutely amazing. Time zero. What does that mean? <laughs> Why is my time zero? Oh, in fact, I've just seen my clock isn't going up. Oh, well, that was a very fast solve. Don't believe what your video length says about 1 hour 27 ticking on for 28 minutes. In fact, I solved it in zero seconds, which is quite a remarkable time. I think even if I'd solved it in 12 seconds, I would still say that was a very good time on that puzzle. So the fact I've done it in zero is really something to be admired. Let me know how you got on with that. It's another feature length edition. And I know we've been doing a lot of long videos. I would, I, I asked this from time to time and the comments seem to be that many of you really enjoy the longer videos. Um, but I don't know how accessible that makes a video like this for potential new viewers. So maybe if you're a new viewer and you've just watched this to this point, did you enjoy it? Would you watch another one? Or would you like something a little bit easier on average? That would be interesting for us to know. But Analytical Lint Ninja has come up with something quite remarkable today. That is a very, very beautiful and clever puzzle full of original ideas. Four stars out of five, that, apparently. Wow. That's that's hard, <laughs> you know. That that is uh, that is the opposite of dumbing down, in my opinion. Um, and uh, yeah, but I loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on to. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.